Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the Q&A segment and ready to answer all your questions. So joining us today in, at the panel, we also have Miss Claire Chong from the NUS Enterprise. All right, we have the first question. So what protection does trade secret give since it is not enforceable? I believe uh, Mr. Ma, you can answer this. Oh, yes, this is a good question. I often receive this question. So not the first time I answer it. Okay, trade secret is not for enforcement. If you want to choose, if your strategy is to enforce, please go for patentability, pattern or copyright. So it does not able to give you enforcement right, but it gives you protection. People do not know what you are doing, so they cannot copy you. Remember pattern you need to disclose at the 18 months milestone and people know what you are doing. And all they need is to circumvent the, your claims and they're able to copy your product. So the next one, uh, I think should be also directed at you. Uh, enforcing IP rights can be costly. So is it worth creating IP rights if the company cannot afford to sue others? No, therefore I explain again, litigation is not the first part of call. Don't ever think that. Litigation is very sexy. La. Everybody want to sue each other and then become the winner. But it's not the first part of call because it's costly and lengthy. And the creating IP right is for you to raise money. Like a startup, you need to raise money like right, in order to grow your business. And IP financing is happening in China, it's happening in US. So creating IP is not just to enforce your IP right. Okay, if you have a good business, I believe the investor will find you to have a litigation case. And I really witnessed one of two cases like this. You a startup have a very good IP, a very good business, investor will come to you to give you money to start a litigation. Uh, <laughs> So no worry, if you have good IP, good business, certainly you can start a litigation case. But bear in mind, it's not first part of call. How can startup founders assign the intellectual property to the new company? Oh, so this is a question of ownership and inventorship. Uh, so this would be taught in my IP module class, but here I can share something with you. First, you have to do an IP diligence, whether who owns the IP. If the founder owns the IP, then you can assign the IP to the new company. If the IP is not owned by you, you have no rights to assign the IP to the new company. If one, you think you have the right, the process is quite straightforward. Just engage an IP lawyer, they can do the assignment. What are some of the challenges faced when trying to develop an IP agreement? And which terms do, uh, do startups and university tend to disagree? I think most of the challenges in the IP agreement is the ownership, co-ownership or sole ownership. Um, NUS have this position, we try to have sole ownership. Of course, you can challenge our position by giving your reason why you want to have co-ownership. So I think co-ownership is the most uh, tricky topic because it's a little bit based on the contributions. If a professor is able to contribute much more than you, because uh, most of the time patterns are related to engineering and science, then we will ask for sole ownership. But if it's just now the student is an engineer, then he have, has the right to ask for co-ownership because he's an engineer, so he can develop the IP together with the professor. In fact, it's a plus for an engineering student to join this program. Because then when he want to negotiate for any IP agreement, he has the, the, the chips to say to negotiate with us on co-ownership. So on the question, which terms do start out university tend to disagree on? It's the royalty rate. <laughs> this is a very common question. We ask for 5%, you ask for 1%, and then we try to arrive in the middle ground 3%. Market approach. <laughs> okay, hope I answered the questions. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Mr. Ma. Okay. All right. So on behalf of the NUS team, we thank you for your patience in seeking, sitting through this uh, class and we hope you have enjoyed today's uh, session and learned something new. So don't afraid if, let's say, your questions are not answered today. I know there's a lot of questions that's being posted. So you can still contact us at pgc at nus.edu.sg. 
So thank you everyone once again for spending your Thursday afternoon with us. And remember to mask up, stay safe, and we hope to see you soon. Okay, bye for now. Bye. Thank you. Thank you, Alvin. Thank, thank you, Claire. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for your time. Bye.